Hello Internet, I'm Bozen here. This is going to be part G of the build video for the Perusa i3. Uh, it's on its side at the moment and the reason for that is you'll know if you saw last week's because I broke apart. But what we'll do now is uh, if you look, have a little look up the bit here, as per usual there'll be the time indexes of the parts that'll be in this build video. And I'm just going to jump right into the build video now and go through how I've just done a bit of a fix on it. Anyway, let's get on with it. Rightio, uh, let's finish off part 12. Now, if you saw last week's episode, you will know that I broke a piece on here. Now, what I've done, I have affected in the repair. Now, hopefully this repair will hold long enough to get the printer up, running, working, and then the ability to print a spare part for it to replace the broken part. That is my eventual plan. So, what I did was, uh, if I show you first, uh, I've got some camera B-roll here. Uh, this is uh, how you can see the broken part here. And here, now you can see the bit that came off. So how did I repair this? First, I removed the piece. Then, as you can see here, how the two pieces uh, should have been there and together. I then uh, decided that I needed to use... I was going to do a file groove and a cable tie technique that I kind of... It was a mix of ideas and suggestions off of the people in the comments below from last week's video. Someone drill this, do that here and there. So I had a little think of all the different ways people have said. And then I kind of did my own spin on them. So what I've done here is... I then took my square file, I've got a pack of files like this and um, I used out of it the square file because the bonus with the square file was it was just the exact same width luckily as the uh, cable ties. So what I did was I then at near the top edge because I wanted to be able to make the steel go back and flush I filed in the groove on the top edge there as you can see and then what i did was uh, i wasn't sure whether or not i was gonna glue the bottom piece back on but i thought for now i'll give it a try i'll see how it goes because i could have just cable tied the, the belt straight to that bit there but i thought no it probably hold a bit better with the plastic so i then took the plastic piece and i put a groove in that as well now i deliberately put that groove slightly further to the right as you look at it nearer to the, uh, the other end here. The idea being when the cable ties pull tight, it's going to want to straighten up and it's going to help push that bit that broke off back towards where it snapped off. So that's the plan on that. So then what I did was I took just a bit of super glue, glued that back on there, put the belt in place as well, and cable tied that on. So if you have a little look at the footage here, now you can see how that is cable tied on onto there. Then obviously I've put it back on onto here now and now it is back on here and it is working it's going back and forward the glue still a little bit really shouldn't be playing around with it and what have you but i'm impatient as you've probably figured out already so basically there's friend people talked about putting bits of tape and things on here to stop the belts popping out of the uh the grooves which is something I'll look at a little bit later. But just for now, just while I'm just trying to play with this, I'm doing it this way. And then I'll have a little look later. Because I was to contemplate in putting another cable tie at the other end to help secure the non-broken end as well. To give that some extra support and strength. If I feel I need it, I might do that later. Uh, but at the moment, I thought I'm not going to put any extra grooves or weakness in points in at this point. Maybe later I'll pop patch that up, but we'll see. But for now, this is actually now part 12 complete. Let's move on to part 13. Right, now we've got over fixing and finishing part 12. We can now start on part 13. Things you'll need for part 13 are one heated bed. One roll of Captan tape. Also, four M3 by 25 millimeter bolts, four M3 thumb screw nuts, 
four springs, one thermal resistor, and two pieces of wire to go onto the hotbed. Now, in their instructions, they already show the miraculously two blue wires attached to the hotbed. Uh, we are not quite that lucky, it would appear. It seems like it just comes separate. So we'll first need to grab the wire. In my case, it's red. So grab the wire. This was in the bag with this. So this was in the bag with that. That's how you know which it is, because it's not labelled or anything. There is, for example, some the power cord has some other cable wrapped up with it, some black and red. That is to go from the power supply to the main board later. So don't get them confused in that bag there. I'd say it'd be two of the same colour. It could be blue like they have, or it could be, in like my case, red. As we can see here, we've got two bits of wire. So... What these need to be done then is these need to be soldered onto this board. Now this board has two sides. If you have a little look here, if I zoom this out for a second, you got one side where you can see all the, uh, I don't know if this, the camera's picking it up there, all the striping. And one side looks very flat and hasn't got any striping. Also the side with striping you'll see has these two metal solder areas. Let's get that in the center of the frame a bit better. These two metal solder areas, and on the back it does not. They're just holes, they're through holes. So what you want to do is you'll be stripping uh, a bit off each end of the wire to pass through these holes, to come out this side, lay across there, and solder down onto these pads right there. So let's go on with that. Just take this and strip that off. I have my soldering iron all fired up, ready to go. So what I will do now is grab some solder. I'm just going to tin the ends of these. So if anybody's, if you use a bit of soldering, what you're basically doing is taking the ends of these and just adding a little bit of solder to them to hold all the uh, threads together and what have you. That's one done. I hope the camera's picking this up okay. There we go. That's those two done. There we go. They're not the same length at the moment, but I can trim them down in a second. Now I'm going to take these. come to the rear of the board that doesn't have them and then so we're going to do with them is push them through both through there and then so I've got them and I'm going to just pull them through and fold them over okay they seem to be pulled through and folded over so now I just need to grab my soldering iron and solder these on Just laying a bit of solder down onto the onto the pad, then I can push that down on and just add solder and let the heat move it along. I want to make sure there's a very nice mechanical bond. You can now see them going through there nice and clearly with the plastic going right up to the edges and there I tilt them I try and give you a better you can see how they're now soldered onto there so that is the bit that they were showing us already done now just done I'm not worrying about stripping the other ends of the cable till I'm ready to attach them to the board later because I might trim them to length if required. Next thing, on the back here it says, so on the back here, which is a side where you've got these cables coming through, this is a side we're supposed to put this thermistor on. This is supposed to be taped down apparently in the centre. But there is a hole there, so I don't know if it has to be on the hole or just on the metal surface, to be honest. 
this is an area it's all new to me so I'm going to tape it just off to one side of the hole and use this cat tan tape which is something I've never used before so again this is a learning curve for us all weird bit is they showed you on their lovely picture like a inch and a half wide version not this centimeter wide version let's just cut a little bit to start off with and tape that down and just keep adding more tape I suppose okay I have now taped that on I don't know if you can see the yellow on there with the tape just there so that should be on now that so these wires can kind of root along with these here later to help cable management now the next stage is pretty pretty damn simple let me just fold the end of my captain tape over so I don't lose the end let's move this out the way bring the printer back in oh knocking everything over on the way okay now we've got the printer back in position we've taken the bed with the cables all coming out of the bottom put them through that towards the back for now <coughs> and lay this <coughs> excuse me just in position there now what you want to do next is you'll be now using the four m3 by 25 mil bolts the four m3 thumb screw nuts and the four springs Bring them all over. This is very, very simple. This stage, you just take your bed, drop your screw through it, put your spring through it, drop that through the hole. Take your little uh, thumb screw there. screw it on that's it just repeat that at all four corners Okay, I've now gone round and done all four of them, so the bed is now mounted. Okay, so now I've got that. Make sure these cables at the back are not going to get caught up or trapped. I'm just bringing mine up onto the top of the bed here for now. I'm not going to put the glass on or anything yet. That'll happen near the end because not much point putting glass into a situation where it could get broken while you're moving it all around until you're done. The glass is going to stay over here in its nice little soft padded area until i'm ready to use it because if you've already seen i'm a heavy-handed oaf and i'll probably break it so okay that was uh section 13 time to move on to section 14 part 14 here we come okay here we are on part 14 now i'm the part 14 in their instructions literally only one little thing i'm gonna start include a little bit of, from their part 15 because their part 15 is atrocious it literally has two things one uh attaching a power well uh the switch of the power supply what it should be on and uh positioning of some of the limiter switches uh basically the bit after this section on their instructions it's kind of like figure it out yourself almost so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring those couple of uh the quick mounting stages and then i'm going to leave all the wiring stage to the section after this but let's get on with this section of part 14. So for this, we are going to need four M3 by 12 mil bolts, four M3 nuts, four M4 by 12 millimeter bolts, uh, the main board and the power supply unit. This is a really simple stage, even simpler than the last. All we need to do here is try not break it as we move it around. So what we're going to be doing here is taking the main board 
Okay, I'm just about to grab uh, parts from there. If you've seen it suddenly shift, it's because I just went to grab a part from there and somehow disconnected it all from the, uh, the side and everything. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is grab the main board more gently this time so I don't rip my paper orange thing off the desk. And I'm going to grab the four M3 by 12 mil bolts and the four M3 nuts. Okay, right. And this is such a simple step. It is amazing. All we're going to be doing is attaching this board. I'll flip this wire out of the way onto this piece here. And all we need to do for that is take a one of the M3 by 12 mils and one of the M3 bolt the nut. Sorry, pop that through there. Drop the nut. Pick the nut up again, tighten that nut on the back there if you can. I'm just doing it quickly finger tight because I want to get the rest in first. And I'm going to tighten one down and make the ball kind of stand proud and then not be able to get the ones in the other side because these are just the right length. No more. So as you can see the bottom's popping off as it is at the moment. So we're just going around all the corners with these bolts. Okay, now they're all in loosely. I'm just going to tighten them up a bit, but not too tight. I don't want to stress the main PCB or really whack it with this, but I just did that. Just want to make sure it's secure. Okay, that's secure. So we're going to take the four M4 by 12 mils. And then I'm going to grab the power supply. And now on the power supply, there is a switch on here. So as you can see on there is a switch and what you want to do is make sure it's for the right voltage for your country. As I'm in the UK, I'm going to switch it to the 220 volts. If you're in the US, for example, uh, double check your house supply just in case you have a really weird, obscure house. But otherwise, I'd say you'll be 110 in the US. Uh, I think most of Europe is 220 as well uh but don't hold me to that check what your voltage is in your country okay and then you're going to take this line up the there's four screw holes on the back of this here one two three four at the bottom there and they line up these four holes that are on here and then just screw them in there i'll tighten them up just yet just want to get them in first And there we go that is now the power supply and the main board fitted to the printer my my it's actually starting to look like a 3d printer now this is getting quite exciting okay that is now the end of to the end of my kind of part 14 um next time i will basically be tackling part 15 because Part 15 is basically up till it's finished. Um, so next week you'll be seeing basically me figuring out, routing all these wires, where they go, and uh, maybe just powering it up for the first time. Who knows, I may even get a test print out of it, but I won't know till next week how well that goes. But next week is mainly going to be uh, putting it all together, the final bits of wiring all this up and what have you. Um, I've got a lot of figuring out to do because the instructions they give you, uh, well, part 15, it literally says, all it says in part 15 is where to attach the um, carriage uh, stops, switches, and um, flick that switch I've already told you about on the power supply. That is literally all it says in the instructions. It pretty much leaves you dead in the water at this point. After this point, they pretty much leave you dead in the water in the instructions. One graphic within the instructions that tell you where to plug stuff on here. And that's it really so i'm hoping to go through that all for next week and then basically if you are somebody who that graphic isn't going to be enough you just need that little extra bit of help and then hopefully then the video next week should be what you need to finish everything off and then um after that we'll be starting then doing videos after that of printing and uh calibrating as best as i can this is going to be a learning circle that's for sure 
but I'll get there I'll get there I want to get this going I've got so many things going on up here that I want to print out on here so I will look forward to seeing you next week obviously catch me on Twitter um, if you like this obviously do the usual like and subscribe and uh, what have you any comments shove them in the bit below you guys have been so extremely helpful to me out there I've been great feedback from you lot in the 3d printer community you guys have just been awesome to me so I'm hoping to continue to be awesome for you guys and help hopefully make videos you'll enjoy watching well basically I'm gonna end on that happy note and I will catch you next week catch you later bye <laughs>